Welcome top news today. Trump's immigration proposals would foster a more prosperous America. President Donald Trump has presented his first offer on immigration reform an exhaustive list of measures to better seal our terribly porous borders, establish internal security and reassert federal authority over renegade sanctuary cities. It includes conservative wish list items like a wall along the Mexican border that's too expensive and whose objectives could be better accomplished, for example, through more resources for electronic surveillance. However, the Democrats often behave as if they prefer a border with the holes of a colander to win cheap electoral advantage. Seen as a first offer to very difficult negotiating partners, Mr. Trump's principles are best evaluated in terms of what is likely, because the dreamers are hostage to this process, and what is needed, because the present system of granting even permanent legal visas is broken. By endorsing the kinds of reforms proposed by Republican Senators Tom Cotton of Arkansas and David Perdue of Georgia, President Trump is offering Congress an opportunity to better consider how new arrivals can contribute to national prosperity. The United States has about 45 million immigrants and annually welcomes 1.5 million. About one quarter are here illegally, and in recent years, their number has hardly changed. Declining birth rates abroad and tougher border enforcement have already slowed the inflow. In contrast to other industrialized countries, the United States places greater emphasis on family reunification. Green cards are granted automatically to spouses, minor children, and parents of U.S. citizens. Subject to annual limits, entry is granted to other relatives of citizens, legal immigrants, and refugees, and those who can contribute to economic growth. The Cotton Purdue bill would limit family reunification visas to minor children and spouses, end the lottery and focus on workforce needs. Currently, immigrant workers tend to be concentrated among two groups, those with less than a high school education and those with more than a four-year college degree. Downward pressure on wages of lower skilled workers is measurable, but overall the impact of immigration on growth is positive. Technology-intensive activities are greatly enhanced by the influx of high-skilled immigrants, and those benefits overwhelm the costs imposed by lower wages on unskilled workers. Immigration stresses social cohesion, especially among the working class. New arrivals compete for jobs and often eat different foods, practice different religions and have different family and community traditions. Folks in small towns and rural counties, riveted by the loss of factories and consolidation in agriculture. Those are important reasons why they don't leave for educational and employment opportunities in diverse urban settings and have abandoned the Democratic Party. Liberals in big cities especially in the media and universities who shape public perceptions dismiss middle American ambivalence as ill-informed, xenophobic, and racist. After all, the urban elite work harmoniously in Manhattan office buildings, California technology centers and the like where cultural affinities that bring together professional groups tend to overwhelm ethnic differences among highly educated adults if nothing else, professional schools like mine socialize students to common metropolis values and behavior. That's why those common people elected Donald Trump to the dismay of urban intellectuals. As Barack Obama so often lectured during his first years, elections should have consequences, and now the will of the common folks should be served.